Some of the genealogy websites like Ancestry, Family Search, and others, you might have seen a page from one of these books. Or maybe you have one of these books or both of these books or some other genealogy book from there. How do you read what it says, especially if you don't know any Portuguese? Well, whether you're new to reading them, would like to review, or see if there's something you didn't know, or maybe just check out the books. Be sure to watch all of this video. I'll be sharing these two books that I have now. They are from Flush, which is one of the islands. But of course, these genealogy books, they're all pretty similar. So whichever island you happen to connect to, you could benefit from watching this video. I'll go over these two book examples, some helpful information, terms. Towards the end of the video, I'll give you some examples that you can practice with. Of course, the answers afterwards. Starting from the front of the book, as you can see, we have the title. In this tells you uh, the Camara Municipal, which is that government building. And this is from Lages, uh, Lages das Flores. The Azores is actually spelt with a C with this mark at the bottom. In the United States, we spell it with a Z. Obviously, it's easier for Americans that way. This mark at the bottom is called, in English, a cedilla. So that's what that mark is. And that, with the C, it makes a different sound. And so they pronounce this actually a sosh. This tells you the author right here. A lot of times Portuguese people have two first names and two last names. In this case, it looks like it's two first names and three last names. You'll find that's quite common to have more names than what we would see in the US. On here, you'll see the dedication page in which he dedicates it to his parents. On here, they um, give you some information about the history, then they talk about the names. And as you can see here, the name, this is pronounced Freites. On the island, it's Freites. In the United States, it's Freitas. So a lot of these names, the pronunciations were simplified or Americanized. So um, Americans had an easier time saying those names. What they're talking about here is how common the names were. And the name Freitas is very common on the island of Flores. However, you can see it on other islands as well. So they are talking about how in uh, the Casais ebook of Flores and Corvo, they're talking about how many times that name comes up. And it is 7,185 times is when the name Freitas comes up. Now compare that then to the next one, which is 6,032. That's how many times those names are referenced in the book. They also, oh, down here, they start talking about something which is um, referred to as the foundling wheel. The foundling wheel is where children were abandoned. Depending on the time period, they would go to a church and there was this wheel that spun from the outside to the inside of the church and someone could anonymously leave their child if they no longer could care for it for whatever reason. Sometimes people would leave their baby on somebody's doorstep or they would leave it at the Camara Municipal. And I'll show you more information about that later in the book as they reference that abbreviations, as well as the acronyms. I'm just going to go over the most important ones that I think you should know. You will see these in other genealogy books. So this would benefit you from whichever island you happen to be from. This one right here, this word is in reference to a marriage. So when you see the C dot, that means they were married. It'll usually have um, a date of some sort, perhaps even like a place or a location. You will see E-U-A. And that's in reference to the United States of America. That's what some of those people had left. So they referenced that they died in the U.S. or they went to the U.S. Um, that is referenced. So if your ancestor is not in a book, it could be that they had already left the island and they were just omitted from the book. EXP dot, that means that they were an abandoned child. In Felicio, which is in reference to um, somebody had died. N dot, that's important. That's in reference to somebody being born. Now, if you come across a relative and in a record it says natural born, that means the child was born out of wedlock. Now, in some cases, they do later marry. So you want to make sure you do some research to find out what the story really is. Another word you may come across is incognito or incognita. 
and that means that the mother or the father is not known. You'll also see on here um, philia and philu, and that's in reference to um, a son or a daughter. The one that ends in an A is a daughter. The one that ends in an O is a son. NM and NP, that's in reference to their maternal side and their paternal side. They will sometimes reference the grandparents. If you're lucky, they will point out the grandparents in a marriage record. I'm always excited to see that because that gets you another generation in there. All right, moving on to the next page. On here, they have this V with a, a small A, and they have V with a small O. That's in reference to a male widow and a female widow. Now, the one with the A is female, the one with the O is male. If you see a JA that goes with the V in a letter, that means they were already a widow. All right, so we've got, this is the title page. And then it starts into the genealogy. But before I get to that, I want to highlight what's in the back of the book. In the back of the book, not all books have this, but gladly and luckily this one does. They have a list of these different surnames. In other words, the last names, as you see in here, they're alphabetical order throughout the book. They have the page numbers on there. These quite often have one or two last names. Like I said, some people have one last name, sometimes they have two last names, and same with their first name. Sometimes one, sometimes two. Now, if we look on the back side here, you'll notice that the name Freitas, which looks like this, there's more than one. So a lot of times you'll find that they have two names together. And you want to be careful when you're researching. I have to check all the Freitas names because I connect to each and every one of those names. If you can't find your ancestor under their name, sometimes you have to look around them. It's tougher looking for the wife because a lot of times they went by their religious name and they didn't necessarily have a last name. Some of them had a name like As you can see in here, when they did not list these by their religious names. So you have to look under the family name. You may have to go back a generation, or maybe go in more current times, or maybe look for their male son in order to find your relatives that way. Sometimes it's helpful to look at the bibliography to reference other books. However, some of these books are, are really hard to get. There's a lot of them that are only available at the Camera Municipal. And as you noticed in this book, um, there is no table of contents. So I would not necessarily expect in one of these books a table of contents and an index. If you have one or the other, consider yourself lucky, especially an index. I know that that is a fabulous thing to come across. It makes it much easier to research. Now, when I open this up, you will see right in here, they have the time period listed and then they have the names in bold and then they have information about them. They do mention when they were, this means that they were um, abandoned on this date. You'll see this phrase that's referred to. That's in reference to somebody being left on um, somebody's doorstep. It's interesting, um, this pattern of children being left on the same people's doorsteps is very interesting. Sometimes you'll see on here, it'll say, uh, Camera Municipal. All right, so these are other uh, deaths, and these are in order of their death, and then this is the time period. So if you look right here, there's this term right here. This is escravo. This is an important word to know. That means that this person here, Salvador, who is 46, he passed away, and he was an escravo. Escravo means slave. You don't see this word used a lot, but it's an important word to know so that you can identify any relatives who may have been a slave.
You'll notice this word right here, and that means they were single. You'll notice that they have the ending of an A for the women and an O for the men. The back of the book, they have various information, and then they also have an index. Now, keep in mind, not all the books have an index, so if you happen to find an index, you're very lucky. In here, you can see a lot of single last name. However, right here, they have um, two last names. Interesting note, Freitas, they only have just the Freitas name. It is not a double last name. Now, the next part we're going to go over are these names in here, and I'll show you how to read this part. Certain names were changed, and sometimes it had to do with the time period. But if you're researching one of these two names, you really want to make sure you check for both of those names. We're going to start with number two. As you can see right here, there is a two. And this is in reference to the second family. So in other words, family one and family two are supposed to be different families. However, I found sometimes they were connected. They may or may not have known about it, but the intention is, is that for each number, it's a different family. You'll also see over here, they have an asterisk, and that is in reference to a continuation of a family. And I will talk about that there. This family continues down here. So looking at this one with the family number two, it starts with a one, then there's a two, then there's a three. How you read that is that this is the oldest generation. So it's the first ancestor of this family, followed by their child, which is number two. Their child had number three here, number three there, and then this number three, their child is number four, number four. Then this child had number five, number five and it continues on to the next page, continued on from there. Now what's interesting is that we have, look at this, we have Joan, and then he's mentioned again. Look right here, there he is again. Sometimes they will list them a little bit later on the page because his wife passed away and he remarried. As you can see here, there is the small v with an O. That means he was the widow of his first wife. Go ahead and hit the pause button now, and then I'll go over the answer in just a little bit. We have one, and there's only one one out of this whole family. So this is the first ancestor. We then have a two. We then have a two. And there's another two at the bottom. So this two and that two, these are siblings. This number two had these two children. Now the sibling of number two, this person did not have any children listed. Okay, but I wouldn't say that they didn't necessarily have children. It could be that they didn't, but not necessarily. It's just not in the book. Now listed in with this, you will see that it says an F dot and then you see this word right here. So that means before. In this F dot, remember it means died. They died before 1717. You're gonna see this term right here and that is in reference to the children that they had. Sometimes they'll list a location, they'll name the parish. On this one, it's not listed. You look on here, it'll reference like C dot, that tells you um, Ponte Logada. Now that is not in São Miguel, that's actually on Flores. There's a Ponte Logada on São Miguel, as well as in Flores. You wanna be careful and know which island they're referencing. Now in this book, they don't say São Miguel. It's safe to say they're referring to Flores because in this book, it's a Flores book. The only time it's not Flores is when they note it in there. So Antonio, he was married in Ponte Logada on Flores, um, on this date, 
he married Maria. And you'll see a little bitty number here. Then it's in reference to what's at the bottom. That has to do with the footnote. And as you can see right here, a noted Corvo. This person was born in Corvo. Would be her, Maria. There's uh, an F followed by a little A in reference to who her parents are. They list it. This is in reference to her mother was. You got to be careful because she had the same name. And then this word right here, it's in reference to where they lived. Right over here, you're going to see this term right here. It's at the end of this right here, which is in reference to the following. In this case, they don't have a number. So they're not referring to um, them being in another section or included with another family. Maybe they married into that family. It just says the following. It's right down here. You'll see this asterisk. This person is continued over here. They made a separate section for him. And with the asterisk, they're referring to him being as part of that family. This is just his own section. The dates that are written in these books have year, month, and then day. They also have periods in between. So you want to make sure you read the right date so that you record it correctly. Well, I hope this video will help you better understand. And of course, more importantly, share this video with somebody who might be having a hard time reading what these say.